Hello YouTube chess lovers my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the ninth part of the dirty chess tricks if you are bored with playing your regular opening and if you're looking for a new weapon which you can occasionally employ in quick games especially at online chess servers or a friendly match then Grobe's attack is the right choice for you this opening will throw your opponent to their own resources it contains lots of tricks where your opponent needs to play very accurately to defuse all of them. The analysis which I am going to present in this video are not published anywhere as all the work has been done by me with the help of Fritz Engine. So in other words I am sharing one of my own secrets with you. The opening start with a weird move that is the move G4 and black player will definitely think <laughs> what's this? Isn't that I'm going to play the move d5, grabbing the center and attacking the g4? Well, yep, that's true. But imagine the second surprise with the move bishop to g2, which looks completely stupid because it's attacking the d5 pawn, which is firmly defended by the queen. And that means if black wants, black can easily capture the g4 pawn. Well, if your opponent plays other moves, for example, e5 or c6, then you play the move h3 and continue with an equal game but there are more than 70 percent chances that your opponent is definitely going to grab the g4 pawn and wondering what's going on well here's the answer the fun start with the move c4 now as i have highlighted over here black has few choices but the first point to be noticed is if black captured the c4 pawn then that comes bishop captures b7 and after knight to d7 bishop captures rook and after queen captures bishop and the move f3 objectively speaking your computer is saying that the position is equal but practical point of view if you play accurately that extra exchange will definitely count so that is the reason why black has tried other moves over here the first move i want to consider is the move e6 after this move, I'm going to propose why I should play the move queen to b3. So attacking the b7 pawn as well as attacking the d5 pawn. Accordingly, black has tried few responses. The first response I want to cover is the move queen to c8. After this move, why I should capture the d5 pawn. And now, believe it or not, the best move over here is the move c6. The nature looking move that is e captures d5 we leads to the instant disaster after the move bishop captures d5 so white is now looking at two soft spot of the black camp that is the f7 and b7 which black cannot defend both of them so for example if black try to save the b7 pawn with the move c6 then there comes bishop captures f7 and after king to d8 not only white will gain a piece just in the opening but black king is clearly misplaced the second move knight to f6 doesn't change the scenario because after this white is going to capture the e6 pawn and however black responded the game is simply lost for example if your opponent plays the move bishop captures e6 then you can simply capture the b7 pawn with the queen and this time around white will grab the rook in the corner so let's see the best move in this position that is c6 after the move c6 why should continue with the forcing move that is h3 now black response is pretty much forced over here black cannot play the move bishop to h5 because white is going to capture the e6 pawn and when black recapture with the f pawn the black queen it looks like doing a babysitting on the c8 <laughs> so that cannot be good right so that's why bishop to f5 is forced at this position after the move bishop to f5 once again we are going to play a forcing move that is knight to c3 and now black response is forced if black carelessly develop a king side piece for example knight to f6 then there comes e4 attacking the bishop and after bishop to g3 we have familiar babysitting scenario <laughs> so that's why at this position black has to accept the pawn now the most obvious looking move is e captures d5 after this white has the another stunner that is 
knight captures d5 bam the first point to be noticed is if black capture this knight then white will recapture with the bishop and now once again familiar trick is on the table which we have already covered in the early section when first time I seen this move I thought that isn't that a blunder because black can obviously play the move bishop to e6 and never peace well this is exactly white wants because now white plays the move queen to e4 tactics based on the pin so black is desperate to get a piece then he has to continue with the move b5 and we are continuously creating a pin with the move queen to c2 I reached this scenario in one of my game where my opponent responded with the move knight to a6 the idea is very simple black wants to protect the queen now and now black is all set to capture the piece now instead of knight to a6 if my opponent has played the move knight to d7 then knight to f4 is a very very strong move at first glance knight to a6 looks a very good move but in fact it turns out as a blunder my next move confirm the white victories I wonder if you can spot it okay the sequence start with the move knight to f6 check and after capture with the knight here comes queen to c6 check and after queen captures queen and bishop captures queen after the whole sequence white emerge with an exchange up so that was all about queen to c8 the second move black can try is the move c6 but here white can capture the d pawn and black needs to be very very careful if your opponent casually capture with the c pawn then there's a trademark trick which happens in many grobs line that is the move queen to a4 check and nabbing the black bishop so you should always remember this one after the move e captures d5 white should capture the b pawn that forced the issue with the move knight to d7 and once again we reach to another critical scenario of this opening here white can capture the c pawn but you should remember this golden rule that if the c file is open then never ever capture the second pawn for example if white capture the c pawn at this point then after rook to c8 black is not only attacking the white queen but is also threatening a checkmate on the c1 so more or less white has to give up the queen and the game so that's why here the best move is knight to c3 and now we all set to capturing the c pawn i reached this position in few of my games and all the time my opponent has responded with the move rook to c8 black can also play the move knight to e7 but that will shut down the f8 bishop for a long time so more frequently rook to c8 has been tried what black is up to is to do a very fast development and then exploit the fact that white king is stuck in the center well here i responded with the move d4 and after the move bishop to d6 to my opponent's surprise i played a computer type move queen captures a7 so it looks like white is playing like a beginner's move playing with the queen where black is developing his all pieces and black will emerge with a better position but this is one of the very good exception let's see how the game turns out so here my opponent obviously played the move knight to f6 i responded with the move knight to f3 and after he castle and i castle he played the move rook to e8 i responded with the move queen to a6 he attacked my h2 with the move queen to c7 where i played the move h3 and after bishop to h5 and queen to d3 suddenly from nowhere white emerged with a clear pawn up and that pawn is a distant passer so sometimes this opening is not about creating the immediate tricks but there are also some long run tricks also exist the third move black can try is the move knight to f6 after this i reckon that white should capture the d pawn and once again black response is force black cannot play the move knight to d5 because yup our familiar trick queen to a4 after e captures d5 the third aggressive move that is knight to c3 so all three pieces are raining down to the d5 square and accordingly 
black has tried two moves. In the first one, one of my opponent has tried the move knight to c6. His idea is that if I foolishly capture the b7 pawn, then after knight to b4, definitely black is winning. But I played a stronger move that is knight captures d5. Here there are two moves exist. If your opponent plays the move knight to d4, then first of all you should capture the f6 knight with the check and after queen captures f6 you can cold bloodedly capture the b7 pawn. If your opponent plays the obvious looking move that is knight to c2 check then after king to d1 knight captures a1 you can capture the rook with a check and after queen to d8 bishop to c6 check and king to e7 you can even capture the a7 pawn. The simplest reason is black king is clearly misplaced as well as the knight and at this point white is emerged with a two pawn up and a better king safety. Now instead of knight to c2 check if your opponent plays the move rook to d8 then the situation is more worse because now we can play this queen to e4 check not only guarding the c2 but also attacking the bishop so the bishop has to go back and after this we play a very simple move that is e3 and emerge with a one pawn advantage so those are the tricks if your opponent plays the move knight to d4 the obvious move over here is knight captures d5 after this we are going to capture with the bishop so now we are hitting the f7 square where black has two choices. If your opponent plays the move knight to d4 at this junction then I recommend that you should play the move queen to c4 attacking the knight attacking the f7 and at the same time defending the c2. The most obvious response is bishop to e6 afterwards why should happily capture this bishop because let's say if your opponent wants to maintain the integrity of its pawn structure then it will definitely capture with the knight but then white emerged with a clear pawn up advantage. The most critical try is queen to d7 which not only defending the f7 square but creating some nasty tricks for the white side. Here comes the another surprise that is the move f3. So it's attacking the bishop. If black castle on the queen side then white is going to capture the g4 and exchange some pieces where position is quite okay for white so the most critical try is bishop to f5 but now comes the super shot that is bishop captures f7 bam if king to d8 then e4 is a very strong so the obvious question need to be asked what will happen is queen captures f7 well after this white can capture the b7 pawn and this time around not only white will regain a piece but white will emerge with a clear two pawn advantage. So the worst come worst case is in this positions white can get at least a draw. So that was about knight to c6. The second move black can try is the move c6. But I don't believe in this line because here obviously white is going to capture the b7 pawn and after knight to d7 remember our golden rule as here white has already played the move knight to c3 that's why white can easily capture the c6 pawn yes black can get some initiative after the move rook to c8 and queen to e4 but already white is a pawn ahead in this situation and the worst news is there are two more pawns are hanging in the black camp so all in all this is more enjoyable position for white the second move black can try over here is knight to f6 but this is one of the easiest move where white can confirm his advantage. Here white should capture the d pawn and after black recapture the simplest move of the game that is queen to b3. So attacking the knight attacking the b7 the worst news for black is black cannot move the knight so for example if knight goes to the b6 then bishop captures b7 will nab an exchange and black also cannot play the move e6 because our familiar trademark queen to a4 so that leads to the only move left that is c6 but after this queen captures b7 
and after knight to d7 the golden rule says that we cannot capture the c6 pawn so we are going to play the move knight to c3 knight is hanging and the pawn on c6 hanging if black capture the c3 knight then after d capture c3 the black pawn is definitely going to drop and if black tries the move rook to b8 then after queen capture c6 there are no threats exist for white for example if your opponent plays the move knight to b4 then you can easily safeguard the c2 with the move queen to e4 if bishop to f5 then d3 and white is all good the last move black can try is the move c6 well here my recommendation is you capture the d pawn and when black recapture with the c pawn now you play the move queen to b3 so now we have some nasty threats on d5 as well as b7 and accordingly black has try few responses please note that e6 is not possible in this case because of our trademark that is queen to a4 check the first move i want to consider is the move queen to c7 which has a sneaky idea to checkmate white by capturing the bishop well of course we are not going to fall for this so we are going to play the move knight to c3 attacking the d5 pawn so accordingly black has tried two responses if knight to f6 then the simplest is knight captures d5 which has a merit of attacking knight as well as queen and if black capture this knight then after bishop captures d5 we have familiar trick which we already seen it if instead of knight to f6 black played the move knight to c6 then we played the move knight to d5 and doesn't matter whether queen goes to the c8 or d7 square for example in one game my opponent played the move queen to c8 then there comes queen to b3 so now we are looking at the fork at the c7 the only good way to defend is to play the move e5 but here comes a very little but effective move that is the move d3 now if your opponent plays knight to f6 over here then you can definitely grab that knight and double the black pawn so accordingly my opponent responded over here which many of your opponent will respond that is the move bishop to d6 so idea is to protect the e pawn and now black is threatened to move the knight to the d4 square well it looks all good and rosy up to my next move that is the move h3 and now black cannot move the bishop so my opponent execute his plan with the move knight to d4 which at first sight looks very threatening but after the one move that is knight to e3 and my opponent resigned so the second move black can try over here is knight to f6 but against this i'm recommending that you should play the move queen captures b7 and after knight to d7 play the move knight to c3 so now three pieces are attacking on d5 so black response is forced black has to play the move e6 and after this we are going to play the move d4 now it's true that this is one of the best try by the black but still white can work out some nasty tricks in this lines to illustrate them let me show you my base game in this line so here my opponent responded with the move bishop to d6 i responded with the move queen to a6 attacking the bishop and he responded with the move queen to c7 so idea is to attack the h2 and quickly going on the king side castle after a long thinking i come out probably one of the best move in the game that is bishop to d2 and there are every chance that your opponent can go wrong over here for example if black foolishly castle at this point then there comes knight to b5 and black will lose a piece so that's not possible if black plays move such as bishop to b4 then he has to watch out for nasty tricks on the c file after the move rook to c1 the third move black and try is the move knight to b6 so blocking the sixth rank but after this we can play the move knight to b5 attacking the two piece and after queen to e7 we have a very sneaky move that is the move a3 can you believe this move stopping the castle if black castle at this point then the simplest is capturing the bishop and when black recapture we are securing queen and a rook 
so that's why castle is not possible and let's say black do another time pass move for example bishop to f5 then after this we can capture this bishop and when black recapture now we can play the move bishop to b4 so hitting the queen doesn't matter where the queen goes for example if queen goes to let's say d7 square then after knight to f3 it is only white which has many plans for example knight to e5 castling rook to c1 but on the other hand black doesn't have a concrete plan as his king is stuck in the center for a long time and his pieces are very badly placed in the game after bishop to d2 my opponent immediately captured the h2 but this is just asking for it i immediately responded with the move knight to b5 hitting the queen the only way to save the bishop is to play queen to b8 but now comes the obvious move that is bishop to b4 stopping black to castle on the king side and now my three pieces are looking at the d6 square after some thinking my opponent responded with the move knight to b6 so blocking the d6 file completely but here he was stunned by my next move which was the best move of the game that is rook captures s2 bam black has no choice but just to accept this exchange sacrifice so black played the move queen captures s2 but after queen to b7 my opponent has realized the game is almost lost so white is threatening a checkmate on the e7 so black doesn't have time to capture the knight in the game my opponent responded with the move knight f to d7 i give him this check and after the force reply king to d8 i capture the rook in the corner here he was tempted to capture this knight and after the only good reply that is bishop to f1 he played the move bishop to h3 which at first sight looks very very threatening but i have carefully worked out all this here i played the winning move of the game that is queen to c7 check and after king to d8 knight captures b6 is a finishing knot the last move played by the black is queen captures bishop but after king to d2 unfortunately my opponent has to click the resign button I firmly believe now that with this information you can play this attack with a very great deal of confidence. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on this video and I'll meet you in my next lecture with some another fantastic tricks. Until then hunt some fishes with the grow attack. Bye.